I'm going to introduce our first speaker. Uh, we've got Tom Nagel here, who's the Senior Vice President and General Manager for Wireless Services at Comcast. And uh, Tom, uh, I understand you're going to come and talk about considerations in building and operating a carrier Wi-Fi network. So welcome. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you. Thanks for having me. I always am intrigued when I come to these things because literally almost every one of the places I speak gives me a different title. And I, I haven't figured out what, who inside of Comcast is creating these different versions. Um, uh, but this will be fine. I'll, I'll live with this one. I want to talk to you a little about a little of the history. So um, I've been at Comcast a little over 12 years, and a good chunk of those have been focused on wireless and what we mean by wireless. Of course, we've looked at a lot of different things. One of the pieces that have come out of that has been Wi-Fi and Xfinity Wi-Fi. And so I thought it might be somewhat instructive to give you a sense, uh, starting looking backwards, where we are, where we've come from, and then tell you a little about what we think, you know, from a carrier standpoint, not a technology standpoint, uh, what we want to end up doing. There'll be people behind me that will talk more specifics about technology. So, you know, we started really looking at this in 2009. And when we launched in Philadelphia, it was a relatively small implementation. We didn't know if we would even do it. We really had to you know, beg, borrow, and steal uh, for the money because it was such a new concept that uh, we just wanted to get it out there and test. But as we grew, and the, you know, the, the numbers at the bottom are the access points that we had, as we grew, uh, we began to do other things. So we did the outdoor, and the outdoor is the most interesting, or was the most interesting to us at the time. Because we did, it gave us things that no one else had. We, it, when you think of a cable infrastructure and you have two telephone poles, what we have on that telephone pole are three things you need to provide coverage. You have location, and we had zero, we had no zoning requirements. You have power, we were network powered, and you have backhaul. We had a DOCSIS three, you know, multi hundred big, multi hundred megabit a second backhaul that was available to that device. So. We thought that was like the thing that made the most difference. And we learned that that's something that is clearly important, but it's really a layering technique uh, that you have to think about when you're looking at these uh, Wi-Fi networks and, and small cells in general, but more specifically in Wi-Fi. So we went after and looked at uh, the, the small medium business market. Uh, we have a, you know, a large number of small medium businesses that buy services from us. And so what we did is we took those businesses and we began to create uh, a unique access point gateway that had both a public and a private side um, you know, access point. And the, and the business owner would love it. it. It was very helpful for them. It, made, it gave him Wi-Fi in his establishment, but it also gave us a footprint um, by providing a common SSID across the whole base, and it made the, the network more valuable. And then, you know, as part of that, we did the cable Wi-Fi relationship, and so we grew. And it wasn't just us growing, it was the cable industry growing. Uh, we're going relatively flat, fast, it feels fast, um, but we were learning a great deal about what worked and what didn't, where to build, where not to build. And as we did this and we learned and saw what happened to each one of these footprints, we realized that we could go really bigger and broader as we added home hotspots, uh, which are just like the small, medium business gateways, but they make it into your home and they create uh, a carpet of connectivity that is, uh, that is very good. It's not cellular, it's not intended to be cellular and that's one of the most important things to realize is that um, you know, Wi-Fi networks like we're building really aren't, they're not replacements. I think they're, 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 they're companions to, to cellular and to a WAN network and that's an important concept both from the user standpoint and what we're trying to accomplish. And you know, you probably, I'm sure you've heard in the press that we've done, you know, we, we're anticipating that the end of this year we'll be close to 8 million, hot, uh, 8 million hot spots in the United States. Uh, that's growing both by geographic expansion, but also by density. And that we've done other things like the Liberty Global relationship, which allows us to share each other's uh, network. And those are all important steps, we believe, into making access more and more available to our customers, um, but also to begin to expand uh, a cable uh, experience and a valuable cable experience, you know, na internationally, not just in the United States. And so when you think about what that begins to mean, it sort of looks like this. It begins to show not just access point, but a lot of usage. And right now we're at about 200 million sessions a month or so. Um, we have also, you can see there's just a, you know, there's a 
quadratic uh, uh, curve going upwards on tonnage that continues. That is, that is being driven both by number of new subscribers using, but also by utilization of that network. So the per device tonnage is going up. We're also seeing an increase in number of devices per account, which is also part of the, uh, the multiplier effect. So you know, what you see is a network that started small with small ideas and began to grow as we learned more and more about it. And that is the, we realized it had a lot of value to the consumer. And when you think about why we started to do this, or actually probably about midway through this, we began to look at it and say, you know, we think this is actually going to be helpful uh, to our consumers. And so one of the things we began to see, and we saw this a while ago, um, obviously we see a lot more of it today, is that mobile data consumption is just really expanding. I, I can't imagine no one in here who does not believe that nor has seen charts that are exactly like the ones I'm going to show you. But I think it's instructive because you know, quarter after quarter, it really isn't slowing down. So these curves that have been thought about a year or two ago, they're really beginning to play out. And so you look at average monthly you know, US uh, data consumption, and then you say, OK, wow, that's a lot. Uh, but it's really constructive or instructive when you look at where is that data coming from and where, where is the access method that you're getting it from. And that you know, what we're finding is a vast majority of um, connectivity, usage, tonnage, use the whatever, whatever word you desire, that is coming through that handset is literally not touching the WAN. And that today, you know, that's happening in lots of places. If you broke it down even further by location, uh, the obvious things would occur. The home is where you're getting most of the tr traction, most of that tonnage. Probably one or two workplaces is the other. And then there's smatterings of other lo locales that really begin to matter. Uh, most of them are indoor rather than outdoor. So, um, you know, we've taken this and it's become more mainstream for us. So one of the things we've done is begun to take these messages and begin to put them into our high-speed data messaging. So if you play this, this you'll be the, one of the first to see this ad. This is one of our new ads. What's great about that is that Jimmy Kimmel actually comes with every phone. So, uh, I mean, not Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fountain, excuse me. Uh, so, it's, you know, it's one of those tie-ins that we like to do as part of Comcast. Uh, he's fantastic. If you've ever seen the X1 commercials where he's in front of the screen using all of his standard voices, he's, he's very creative. That has nothing to do with my presentation. All right, so we, we were talking about this earlier, is that, you know, Wi-Fi in the past is really, it's just a consumer electronics product, right? It's really never been a service-oriented product. It's all about devices. You go and you buy a Linksys router, et cetera. And that really doesn't bode well, or hasn't boded well for making it any type of reliable product. And I think we're learning what to do with that. And so one of the things we've been focusing on is how do we make this product that we're, this network that we built, more carrier grade. And there are things that, that are required to make it carrier grade. It has to be dependable and reliable. It has to do the things you say it's going to do. It has to be manageable. That's another part of it. It has to be scalable. So all these things are, are don't exist or haven't existed in the past, um, but that we've been focusing on, and not just us. There are people in this audience who focus on it as well. And it sort of breaks down to these different areas around network experience and some of the advanced services. So when we look at this, you know, we're obviously focused on coverage. That's the thing that immediately comes to people's minds. How many hotspots do you have? And that's important. Don't get me wrong. Um, but the other part of it is where you have a hotspot, <coughs> how effective is that hotspot? Is it, is it acting well? Is it, um, does it have the right latency, the right throughput? And putting the management layer into that, ar that architecture that allows you to not only know about it, but begin to uh, help it and, 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 and change things to make it work. And then, of course, security. Around secure SSID, 802, uh, 802.1x, and Passpoint, these are all things that we believe make a cure grade. Um, there are things that are happening on the devices themselves as well, um, but these are the areas we spend a lot of time on. The experience itself is also important because you know, what happens today is that all of us have experienced this, right? We're using these devices to do Wi-Fi and we end up in a black hole. 
I'm on the edge of a Wi-Fi cell, the device gets locked into that, LTE is sort of shut out, it's just a bad experience. And so that that's really has little to do with the carrier, it has everything to do with sort of the, the basics of the technology. And so this is, this is another major area that we're starting to focus on is to how to appropriately um, scale that to begin to virtualize uh, both uh, management, but routing and other smarts so that you can uh, provide much more uh, policy-based activities around broad swaths of uh, locations rather than individually by one location. And then lastly, we think of these advanced platforms where we take a lot of what we are doing and use them to create personalization where it matters. Uh, that really hasn't been figured out yet. Um, but also some of the just location-based type things that people that are doing, not just us, um, some people are doing a lot, you know, they're, they're doing, actually putting effort into it, we're just starting. But if you think about all these types of things, they do begin to uh, provide a structure around which we're putting our investment and our time. So when we talk, so this is, this is another commercial, you'll see another one after this, but it's uh, sort of Wi-Fi where you want it. So roll this. With millions of hotspots nationwide, you no longer have to find one. Connect to one hotspot and be connected to them all. Thank you. All right, so. You know, this kind of brings up where do they want to use it? Uh, the beach scene is, uh, you know, one of the more interesting ones. This is essentially. When you think about where it's being used, this is the lines that get drawn. Um, you know, home is, uh, these are obviously not additive because they, they add way beyond 100. But, you know, a significant portion of these are, it's a histogram. So the home is the most important. Um, if you can solve the home and do it in such a way that provides value, and the home isn't literally just your home, it's your, it's your friend's home. I think we're solving that with Xfinity uh, neighborhood hotspots. So I think the home's been a big area for us and work. Those two we've begun to focus on um, as we also, through SMB and other things, begin to come down that curve. So the reason why they're blue is because we have offers and solutions and ways to begin to solve some of these. Obviously, we haven't solved all of them. There are too many of the locations. Um, but we can, we can begin to solve those through partnerships and other types of things. Uh, the chief of which right now has been cable Wi-Fi, where all the other cable operators are sharing the network and allow me to have access when I'm in Los Angeles, even though that's a time order territory. And so what does it look like? Uh, you know, it's hard to, it's great to show maps. I love maps. Maps are like the eye candy of network engineers. I think they're fantastic. Uh, in this, in Wi-Fi, in the sense of Wi-Fi, they don't tell you a lot, to be honest with you. So, um, what's, what's challenging about this is that when you think of a city, you have not only horizontal, you, have, you not only have 2D, but you have 3D, you have height. And, the, and it's challenging to think of Wi-Fi that does a 100-foot radius type of um, radiation in congested areas to where you think that it's this dense. But if you actually begin to walk down some of these streets, uh, and you're, you're, you're dwelling and you're in different places, you do see Xfinity Wi-Fi. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. And one of the areas that we're learning about is what does it mean to be on the edge? And so when we look at this message, when we look at this map, um, we see the three different pieces working well together, right? So some of these are outdoor. Um, outdoor in this sense, if they're in the center of the city, they're not literally on strand because there's not a lot of strand, but they're vaults. We, have, we dig out a vault, we radiate upwards, and surprisingly those work pretty well. There are also business locations where you have an Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspot, and there are also homes. All of those create a menagerie of connectivity that is not a continuous measure. It's not intended to be that. This is not the Verizon red map. What it is is when I'm sitting in a seat, and I'm going to be there for a little while, um, you know, for a, a majority of your time, you'll be able to find Xfinity Wi-Fi. At least that's the hope. And so when you think of San Francisco, this is literally what San Francisco looks like. Now, um, I, I'm hesitant to even suggest that this is uh, the type of connectivity. If you sit in any of that red, you're going to be connected. You won't be. Again, it's not the cellular red map. 
But if you find places where you are, where you want to sit, have lunch, those types of things, there's a good chance you will find Wi-Fi and you'll be able to connect to it. If you're at a friend's home or you're visiting or those types of things, you will also be able to do those types of things. So again, maps are beautiful. I love them. They don't always tell the story, but they do tell an important story of, be of the beginnings of density. Uh, so if you take that picture and you begin to blow it up nationally, you know, it begins to look like something like this. And, and what this represents, it's hard to see, um, not intentionally, but what's, what's interesting about it is you have the green, which is the, I'm sure what the green is. I think the green is the full possibility of the cable network. So as the cable operators build, the green represents the places where we expect Wi-Fi will begin to go. The yellow represents where they are today. And so you can begin to see the opportunity is not only growing, which it is, but there's more opportunity that we, we can begin to grow. But the goal that we have is Comcast is to begin to foster deeper and deeper penetration of Wi-Fi. So part of that isn't just been national, right? We did the Liberty, uh, excuse me, the cable Wi-Fi piece of that. Part of it has also been international. And so, you know, we have, we think of this from the lens of the consumer. The, the primary thing we think about is where do our consumers want to connect and where can they do it in a way that's cheaper and better and faster. And so it led us to Europe. And so one of the things we've done, we've announced it, I think it's pretty, people probably know much about it, but this is a place where Liberty and we have begun to pair our networks. This is something that will come out at the beginning of the year probably, and that you'll be able to sort of go across coast and begin to get access. And that'll be part of your high-speed data subscription. And then lastly, we look at security, right? So, you know, this is our, you know, I wouldn't call it a roadmap because it doesn't show you timings, but, you know, this is sort of the things that we're doing. So secure SSID is next. We, do, we are going to begin to do 802.1x profiles, Passpoint. You'll see connection managers to begin to help us manage those types of things. So this is, again, part of that user experience aspect of becoming a good partner, a, a good provider. So, oh, okay, so the other part of this also is that we think about, you know, at the, at the, at the, at the consumer level, they really want to just get on and get, have good service. But at the network level, we need to make sure we know what's broken, what's not working, where, what we need capacity and all those types of things. So we've, we've been very active in developing core infrastructures. We have vendors that we've helped not only fund but build and, and begin to bring specific technology to market, but also things like AP Health. Um, we found that you know, we, when we started putting in management layer that we had a lot of APs offline. We didn't know why and these things helped us over the last couple of years determine that and we now manage those relatively tightly. So we're getting better and better at looking at the network. We're moving that deeper into each person, or closer and closer to the user by solving environment, understanding RF performance, signal to noise, RSSI, all these types of things, as well as the user experience. So use, go ahead and hit this. Logging in is easy, and you only have to do it once. So that's an ad on the uh, automatic sign-in that we have. You sign in once. One of the big things we had was a hurdle of knowing your username and password. We have a way to, for you to find it if you want it. But once you sign in on that device, that device gets remembered. And we just sign it in as, as it goes. You can obviously always stop that, but people find it to be very valuable to, to make it work better. And then lastly, you know, one of the things we are doing is you know, we're spending a great deal of time understanding the health of the network. I've talked a little about this from a carrier grade standpoint, uh, but these are sort of beginnings of new functionality that over the last two years we both developed and deployed and allows us to begin to get much, much more serious around managing this, not just for the consumer, which is the most important part, but managing it so that we can be effective in driving that, you know, we spent the money, let's make sure that network works the best at all times. I think that's it. Thank you.